good pupillary dilatation is must for good extracapsular cataract surgery and more especially for phaco mussification surgery and a situation where you don't have good pupillary dilatation that may be a limitation because of various eye diseases but this can be a nasty surprise if it happens because of the situation that the team forgets to dilate the pupil so here the moment the microscope light is turned on we can see the pupil is reacting and there's hardly any midriasis and now there was a panic in the sense that the team realized that because of some confusion the patient didn't instill midriatic eye drop and more so it was not checked and patient is now on the table and anticipating the removal of cataract with implantation of a foldable IOL. So here I am contemplating what to do next. One step can be that you can allow the patient to be assured outside the OT and explain the situation and then instill eye drops and wait for midriasis. However, I decided to proceed. So we'll see what can be done in this situation apart from letting the patient go out and have midriatic eye drops instilled. Now here we are giving intracameral lignocaine along with adrenaline. So these two medicines combined together they paralyze the sphincter pupillary muscle and stimulate the dilator pupillary muscle which will cause a instantaneous midriasis and this has been proved by so many studies that this can work. Not only the midriasis is instantaneous, it is frequently as much as possible with use of topical midriatics and it is also sustained during the whole of the surgical procedure. So now having a pupil dilated to something like 5.5 to 6 millimeter of size we can now proceed for the surgery and I was feeling pretty confident because a 6 mm pupil is comfortable size for me to operate given the kind of experience and the practice expertise which I have developed over a period of time so we have finished the rexes and now we are proceeding for making a side port. Now here it is important to understand that good pupillary dilatation is extremely important to perform phacomusification surgery because it is a machine assisted surgery and good view and approach to the cataract which is lying behind the pupil is very important. So it is like you see the cataract and operate and if you don't have any access to the visibility of the cataract it becomes difficult and more so it becomes a unsafe surgery. So here we are operating this cataract which has been dilated using intracameral lignocaine with injection adrenaline so as to provide us a sustained and a reasonably sized pupil to operate upon. So we will be using a direct horizontal chop technique which is my favorite technique with the given machines which are available and this is the primary chop which has been created. Now it's important to realize and observe that how well the pupillary dilatation is maintained during the surgery. So performing the second chop and so on. We perform multiple chops as smaller fragments are easier to remove and they protrude less into the anterior chamber and just making the procedure more friendly for the corneal endothelium. So here I am again engaging the nucleus 
chopping it into smaller pieces so as to proceed with the fake emulsification. So when number of slices have been created, I am removing the air bubbles which have formed during the FACO or ultrasound peer, uh, energy usage. So we are now pulling out each slice and consuming it using ultrasound energy. So it's a, something like a grade 3 nucleus which is not very hard. So should not be a problem during the removal of the cataract. So overall I will also explain my thought process when this patient was brought on the table and I had the opportunity to inspect the patient's condition. I didn't get panicked. I didn't get upset. Rather I thought that this may be an opportunity for me to show my students that this is one more technique which can be utilized to obtain a good midriasis for operating patients who may be allergic to topical medications especially tropicamide. So there may be few individuals who are allergic to parasympathetic medications like atropine, cyclopentolate and tropicamide. So once any patient who is allergic to any of these medications is usually allergic to the counterpart also. So this is one solution for these patients where you don't need to install these medications. So once the nucleus has been consumed, we are now removing the remaining cortex and because the hydro dissection was not very good, so that is why we have some adherent cortical matter which needs to be polished off from the posterior capsule. So a reasonable amount of dexterity and good foot switch control will allow us to peel the cortex away from the posterior capsule without damaging the posterior capsule. A limitation in pupillary size also limited, has a limited view of the peripheral cortex. So one has to be very careful and slow with good observation that anything which is coming to the fake up or aspiration port is actually the thing which you want to aspirate out. Now injecting the foldable IOL. So this is a hydrophobic monofocal IOL which has been preloaded in the cartridge and there goes the IOL with unfolding of the leading and trailing haptics and optics. Dialing the IOL in place so that it goes directly into the capsular bag which is the most physiological position for any intraocular lens to be implanted inside the eye. And at this moment we can appreciate the pupil has become little less in size but still it has sustained the midriasis well with use of the intracameral lignocaine and injection adrenaline. So here I would like to mention that it is that regular lignocaine which comes with injection adrenaline 1 in 1000 and we dilute this using similar amount of BSS so it provides us a dilution of two times and this can be used safely in the anterior chamber and doesn't cause any damage to the intraocular tissues. Making sure that whole of the viscoelastic is aspirated so that there is no residual viscoelastic in the anterior chamber which may cause few problems in the post-operative period. 
surgery has been finished and now we are inflating and sealing the anterior chamber using the self sealing incision which has been created at this point i also mentioned that this patient had slight steep axis at this meridian which is nearly 70 degrees so we have placed a corn incision there this is the day one post op picture which we can see shows a clear cornea a dilated pupil and a eye well which is apparently well centered as we cannot see any edge and this is another image which shows us the picture with the pupillary area showing the glow or the intraocular glow which is visible through the pupil thank you